We are finishing up Yerushalmi Pei Abaz Hashem, and I want to share with you the uh, last couple of ha'ars, starting from Daf Samach all the way through the end. Um, a couple of very fascinating concepts all in one. Um, a lot of this, these sigas were um, halachic things, and with Pesach schedule, this is what I have to share. All right, so on Daf Samach Hamad Beis in the Ozahara print, um, the Gemara says that um, there's a concept called um, a... Bar Kura, um, which is a tool that was used when they were uh, collecting the olives on the ground. And the Mufarshi Yerushalmi all explain that it was basically knee pads. And the reason is because, as you and I both know, based on our wonderful ages, that uh, getting down on the floor is not so easy. And certainly standing on the on the ground and putting your feet on the ground and collecting things from underneath the tree, which is what happens after you beat it with a stick, um, you're going to find um, that there could be a lot of knee pain, especially um, if you get jabbed by olives. So therefore, um, this tool uh, were basically knee pads. It's pretty cool to see that they were around back then, but, but uh, it makes sense because a lot of agricultural things were developed. So Amar Avo, he says, why is it called um, this word? So he says, Shum um, So a machva is, is a stick that's used, and it, it takes out the hidden ones. Um, and why is it called a um, bar bar, bar car? What's a bar car? So, so Rav Oshem of Shem Ben Lakish says that it's Bar Kira, uh, which means of the knee. Now, that's a very funny expression because we know Bara Kara Davua, that a son is is a knee of his father, which means basically that if, if a person lives his life with a Ruchnius life, and he leaves a son after him uh, who taught him that proper way, so he gets a reward. So normally when someone dies, they can't move. They're, the, uh, when you're alive, you're called Mahalchim. But a person... Um, so it's, he's like a knee, um, because uh, a knee is what actually helps the, the, the movement take place. So bara kara davua, a father is a knee of his father, a uh, son is a, is a knee, a knee of his father. So there's a very funny play on words going on with Chazal, with these knee pads, that they are a bar kara, which is literally a bara kara davua. Um, but I think there's something very profound, which is exactly this point, which is that, um, that Chazal compare that there's something very very special about the bracha that comes to a house from a healthy husband and wife that work together and create a Torahic uh, home that uh, you'll be blessed that it'll be like um, Zesim and what's the, the the faculty of Zesim that the Zesim they actually grow since they fall right underneath the tree. They actually start growing with their parents along with them. That's some of the Shulchanacha just like that's how Zesim grow. That's their um, faculty. So the bar um, the, this this tool, the barkar, which is literally bara kara davua, is an exact expression of that. The way how do you get someone who um, he who becomes a kara davua? He becomes the movement for his father. If you're banecha ksile zesim sevushul hanecha, because you created an atmosphere of love in the house that your that your child wants to be with you, and so that's how you get that bracha. And that's the play on words. I believe a chazal, the, one of the amkas of what chazal are, are hinting here. I'll get to that later. Also, there's a very fascinating Yerushalmi. It's going to tie into this exact same idea. Let's go to Salma Beis and Beis. Um, so it says that. Um, it's talking about the sweetness of the fruits in Eretz Yisrael. So Rav Hanania was selling um, bees honey, and he also had some uh, fruit honey that was made from figs and, and raisins that was for sale. And he mixed up the two. Now, bee honey is more expensive. But what happened? Some donkey drivers came to purchase the bee honey, but he accidentally gave them the cheaper one, the fruit honey. But the price he gave them was... Um, for that, for that which uh, the bee honey, which is more expensive, but then some days happened and he realized that he made the mistake and he wanted to give them back the money, so he set aside the money. So what happened? Um, he he, he came, they came back to the store. And Hanania said, "Ah, oh, Baruch Hashem, you came back. I I I misled you. I sold I sold you the wrong thing. I I sold you um, fruit honey, not bees honey." And they said to him, "No, we came back for that honey. It's so delicious. We want more of that. We're so pleased with it." So and they wouldn't take the money. So then. Um, he said to them, So the Farish Tamise, finally they, they agreed that he separated the money of that honey, Uvana Bay Bay Madrasha at Sipari. And with it, he built the study hall of Sipari. So <clears throat> let's zoom out. The uh, How could you pay? How much money was it already? It sounds like it was just a small purchase. So probably, and most of the Farish, you shall me say this, like the Ali Tamar, that, um, <laughs> that basically, um, of course, it just meant that he contributed towards that. 
Um, but that's not exactly what it says. And the Gemara in Beit says, is very famous to Testament Aleph. It says that if you stole money, but you don't know how to pay it back, you should pay it to the Tzibor, which again is Pashat. That's that's a lot of what's going on here. Um, but other other Mepharshim actually learned that no no it was there was a, this is a huge business transaction and yet he was still very honest about it and they still didn't want the money back which is amazing on their part because I guess they made a lot of money off of it um, but he literally built the entire Sipori based matter now Sipori is where the Yushalmi was written so there's a lot of significance here but what I wanted to say is like this that if you recognize the sweetness of the fruit of Eretz Yisrael which is what these points of the Gemara is saying and th- on that is what you build the the um, the, the base matter should Sipori that it's in that attitude of look at the superiority that Eretz Yisrael has and the Torah of Eretz Yisrael has. So it's a, it's a nod to the Yerushalmi itself. And in that, that's how you build the entire place, in that nod of superiority and beauty. And if you look through those figures, there's some beautiful ideas that are found in Abali as well, but overlap, <coughs> etc. Um, by the way, there's a very famous Gemara here at the end of Peah, which talks about the same story of Nachamish Gamzu, and there's a lot of interesting Mepharshim if you go through comparison. I'm not sure if we're going to get to that or not. Okay, um, there's a very famous Yushami that we're very familiar with that um, Rav Yirmiya says, that which Rav Yeshua ben Levi says, this is on Samachem and Bez, Dom Rav Avon B'Shem Rav Yeshua ben Levi, Lo Sof Davar Halacha Zu, not only in this Halacha, Ela Kol Halacha Shi Rafefes B'Bezden, if there's Halacha that the court waivers are not sure what to do, Veinat Yodea Mati, I don't know why it says At, and you don't know, may not tell, but it's feminine. Say you are a maha tzibur noeg unahog, and follow according to what the tzibur does. And this is Kiyadu, a very famous Gemara, similar version of Bavli, which is on Daf um, 66a. Im him, but him, him, that famous story. And also the Chuvas Arashba talks about this idea, but this is a very famous thing that go look what the tzibur is doing. And you know, we know that many, many um, great gadolim, including Ramosha, were tarach very hard in order not to ever be mavatal a minag and to try to find a piskan peh or a limud zechus for why people had a minag that even seemed a little strange. We are on daf ayin aleph on bays winding down. The Gemara says that Rav Chagai, when he would appoint a parnas on the tzibor, havimatim lon orisa, he would have the administrators hold the Torah scroll. Lomar shekol sarara sinitna mitorinah. He would try to show them that the Torah is granting the any any um honor and authority that you're getting. Be malachi milachu. It says in the Pasuk, be sorry, Yesharu. Rechia Barba, he said, Mekayim um, Archunin, the Torah sustains its leaders. So what are we showing? We're showing that you're about to go into a position where you could hold yourself over others and control them. You have to go in with humility and not with haughtiness. And the way you go in with humility is to recognize that the Torah itself is giving you this power and you're nothing. And that, like, like Rechia is also adding, the Torah itself is going to keep you alive and keep you focused. Listen to this story on Ayan Gimel with Aleph. Shmuel Arak Munavay. Shmuel ran away from his father. So most of the Mepharshim here say, Chaim Kanievsky says he was like a little kid, <clears throat> the Pnei Moshe and the Ali Tamar, they both say that his father was angry at him to rebuke him. What happened? And this is a Gemara that's talking about how people are not honest and we should be happy that some people are not honest when it comes to Tzedakah because it gets us off the hook for not giving Tzedakah all the time. So the Kamle Ben Trade Sipari Tzarifin uh, he went and stood behind two huts of poor people and he heard them talking, oh, should, what dinner where should we use today? Should we use the gold ones or silver ones? And back then they didn't have fake stuff. It was real. So he went, he ran, he told his father and his father said, the famous line, we should thank him um, because otherwise we'd be punished anytime we didn't give tzedakah. So wait a minute, what just happened? His father was angry at him. What do we see here? We see here that his father had no reason to give him musr anymore. The whole reason that he was being angry, by the way, there's avua de shmuel. Right, the father of Shmuel. I hold, uh, who am I? I say su- I humbly suggest that uh, there's a famous look at the Ben Yoyada in Brachas. It's around Daf Yudches Yudches, where it talks about the famous Kabbalistic story about how Shmuel's father was at, was out of the country, and he heard that if he was with his wife, he would have an amazing son, and he came back, and people scoffed at it and said it wasn't his son because he was away. Ayin Shem, the whole famous thing about Avud Shmuel, why he's called that. Um, also, uh, Sirli Bronstein tried to say how Ara that. That in the Yerushalmi it never calls him that, but in the Bible it does. There's a lot to say about that, not for now. But what I want to show is a very fascinating thing. His father was angry at him, and the, oh, so I'm trying to I'm I'm suggesting that my shot here is perhaps why he's called a Vuod Shmuel because he showed what real fatherhood is. Let me let me explain. So what happened? Shmuel gets Shmuel's father's angry, so he runs away. Then he hears what's going on where he was hiding, and he comes back and he tells his father. 
And his father just says to him, we have to thank him. It doesn't say he punished him. We have to thank, you know, it's, we have to be grateful of the Ramam. He tells him this famous mimer. What happened? What happened to the punishment? So you could say his father his father uh, wasn't angry anymore. It, whatever. By the time he came back, he it subsided. But that's not true because if, he, if someone's angry, he needed to give muster. What's up, shot? Shot is like this. That the purpose of chinuch is to get close to our children. And that they should know that we love them and we care about them. But sometimes they need to be told they did something wrong. So as soon as he came and he ran back to his father, that means that he's now connected to his father. When he did that, Vera, he was disconnected. He wasn't thinking about his father. Yosef Atzadik, what did he saw? Bam, he stops. According to another measure, she saw Emo. Either way, he stopped. He thought of his parent and he stopped what he was doing. So then he reconnected and then he was then he was living that way. If we look at our Rebbe, it changes the way we, we think about things. What would your Rebbe say about this? What would your father say about this? Right? So... The fact that he ran back to tell his father what happened means that the relationship is now repaired. So I have no reason to rebuke you anymore. Now we're connected. That's the whole point of the rebuke. It was to that you to remind you, yeah, hey, you think about what you're doing. Think about me and, and think I'm a role model for you. So he was the ultimate role model and he understood what Khinak was. So therefore now there's nothing else to say. He understands that that um, that he did something wrong. And, and and now he's connecting with his father, so it's repaired. Think about that, because that's a very, very important um episode in life. And the last thing is that, um, as I said, it talks about that story about Nachamish Gamzu. There's actually a false alarm, Nachamish Gamzu, which is very fascinating. Um, the, the Yushami actually, sorry, I said there was the last one, but um, Yushami actually tells a story of people that didn't um, that didn't give tzedakah and the guy died. But in that case, they didn't hold it against themselves because he was a Ramoy. When he died, they found out that he was a thief and he was stealing everyone's money and he didn't really need the money. Okay. Um, so what I want to say is like this. Um... Amar Rav Yonah, this is a Yerushalmi that really, really touches me, and it's on Daf Ayin Gimel. Um, sometimes, you know, you read a Chazal, and every Chazal is amazing and beautiful. This one really, really um, touches me very deeply. It, it, one of the reasons is because my Pusik, my middle name is Aryeh. This is actually my Pusik. So listen to this. Ash, Ashrei no sein ladal in Ksivka. The Pusik says in Tilim, it says, Ashrei maskil adal. Um, praiseworthy is a person that thinks about the poor. Yom Ra, you want to tell you Hashem. Hashem will save him on a, on a bad day. And it starts with the Aleph ends with a hey. So if your name is Arye or Ahuva or anything else, if you like it, if, but you should, a lot of girls like to take it from Eshes Chayel, which also works for the first Pasuk. Rachel Mipinim Michra, you would be able to use that Pasuk. But anyway, it's a good Pasuk to, to use because what does it say? It doesn't say Ashrei no Sinadal, just praiseworthy someone that gave Tzedakah. That's not what you did. Ashrei Maskil means that you thought about what the person needed. What did you do? Mestakel B'mitzvah Hecha, so you thought about how to do it. What does that mean? Rav Yona, now it's very funny because Rav Yona is the one that explained this Pasuk. Then it tells a story about Rav Yona. But that's the Pshat because if you say a Pasuk, it has to become you. It has to be that is the Pshat. That's how you live your life. What did Rav Yona do? Um, he saw a rich person, an aristocratic person that lost all of his money. He would say, oh, here, I'm giving you a loan. Why? Because I heard that you have a big Yerusha, so just keep it. And you'll pay me back when it comes. Then finally the guy would find out that it wasn't really true, but he had gotten back on his feet. He would try to give it back. He would say, no, no, it was a matan. It was a gift. Keep it. So that's Moscow. He thought carefully. That's a sensitivity to how when you do a mitzvah to figure out a way, he's not going to be embarrassed and then he'll take it. And that's... And what do you get? What's the reward? Beyond Roy, you malte Hashem. On, on your bad day, Rahman Latsan, Hashem will take care of you. Because if you're Moscow, if you think about how to help others, Hashem will pay you back in that same way. And that's a shot. Ashrei Moscow Adol, that you think carefully about how to give it. And I believe that this is tied into the last Mishnah here, because the last Mishnah says that if someone pretends that he has money, um, if, that he doesn't have money, and he really is a liar and doesn't need it, then Hashem says he won't, he'll die with that. You know, ha- having having needing to take from people, but if somebody um, if somebody um, doesn't have but pushes himself to after getting what he needs, the basic needs, so it's not a psychotic kind of fascist and etc. But he he maintains his dignity, so he'll eventually have everything he needs. And so I want to say two things. One of them is that that story about someone that pretends they needed, so that honey that pretended he actually died from that pretending. So that's why that story is brought. And then this part is that Maskil Adel is that because this person's fulfilling the Mishnah, he's saying to himself, I don't want to take. Because I, I want to be a machmer, but still, and it's your responsibility as a tzibor to look out and find the people that actually still need, even though they're being humble about it, which is their business they want to do. Um, it's very hard not to ask people. Um, there's many, many stories about different gedolim um, that when they passed away, even my Rashiva or Rashi Rubin sees that's all. There was a, f- a family that had been, been that were, they were supported by him 
for many years was Caesar, and when he passed away, that's the only time that we found out. No one else even knew that that he was giving them money and taking care of them, etc., in different ways. So many, many great people, you know, had done things that are private between you and Hashem only. Uh, that's a very, very beautiful thing, and that's Moscow adult to think. And and Moscow adult, by the way, could be that there's someone that you give five dollars to. It doesn't mean five thousand a month. You know, it just means that you're Moscow adult. You think about somebody consciously what they need, and that's an important thing. That's very beyond real. You tell you Hashem. That's a tremendous thing that Hashem looks for. That's the last mission that talks all about. Um, you know, giving tzedakah and having the right attitude. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey in Peah, and we should be zochet to complete all of Shas together, Bezer Hashem, Shas Bali, and Yushalmi, and uh, join me, Bezer Hashem, as we go through Demai. Have a great day.